The HP Omen 15. Does this gaming laptop live up to the hype? Now, I've already created a very laid-back ASMR-style unboxing of this laptop, but in this video, I'm going to take you through every detail that you need to know before purchasing this laptop. Stick around to the end for some great tips and tricks, and for my top three pros and cons. The specs of the version I have includes the 10th generation Intel Core i7 2.6 GHz processor that can max out at 5 GHz with Turbo Boost. It's got a 15.6 inch diagonal FHD screen with a 3 millisecond response time, anti-glare, and 300 nits brightness with a 300 Hz refresh rate. It also comes with 16 GB of DDR4 RAM. And last but certainly not least, this one is carrying the powerful NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Max-Q design with 8 GB of GDDR6 dedicated video RAM. So for the design, the best way to describe the Omen 15 is simplistically satisfying and minimalist yet somewhat bold. It's smooth and sharp and has a comfortable solid and angular feel. The top lid is made out of a slightly rough textured plastic to make the laptop overall more grippable and comfortable in your hands. It does have quite a bit of screen flex and the screen wobble is a little more intense than some of the other laptops I've used in the past, but it doesn't really feel fragile or anything. It passes the one finger over open test, and one really cool thing that takes this laptop a step further is that it can open up all the way to 180 degrees. The deck of the keyboard is made out of metal, and the keyboards are fairly thin but still feel somewhat solid. The keys are small and pretty close together though, so not much key travel and not as comfortable to type on as my Alienware M17, but that's understandable considering its larger size overall. It just feels a little cramped for my hands, which I'd say are actually slightly smaller than the average hands. The fonts on the keys have a large and pretty masculine angular feel, which I'd really like. Now some people have complained about this big gap right here between the chassis and the screen when the laptop is closed, but that honestly didn't bother me too much. You can see that it flexes quite a bit right here, but it doesn't feel like it's easily breakable or anything. When closing the lid, there's a pretty strong magnet that gives the laptop a nice firm snap when closing it. The tracking accuracy on the touchpad is not too great. It does feel a little sluggish, but if you tend to use a regular mouse the majority of the time, this won't really matter that much to you. So for the ports, starting from the right side of the computer, it has a USB Type-C port, a display port, and two USB 3.0 ports. On the left is your power connector, your ethernet jack, another USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, then a headphone jack, and then a full-size SD card reader. Now getting into the internals of this machine, to remove the bottom panel, you just need to remove these eight screws with a small Phillips head screwdriver. Then the tricky part was actually prying this open. I found that using my thumbnail near the top corner to get into that tiny little gap was the easiest way for me. So you can see with the panel removed, we've got two RAM slots, which are not soldered on, thankfully. So later down the road, you can upgrade them if you wanted to. The Wi-Fi card is soldered on the board though, but that's not a big deal because I highly doubt we'll see Wi-Fi 7 anytime in the near future. At the top, we've got three heat ramps and then our upgraded bigger sized fans with vents out the back, as well as on one of the sides. You've also got two M.2 SSD slots, and then it's got tiny itty bitty little subs on the sides. And then down at the bottom is our six cell 70.9 watt hour battery which takes up quite a big portion of the internals. Now in testing the performance of the battery, gaming at ultra settings and performance mode, I got only one hour and 20 minutes of battery life. 1080p streaming at full performance mode and screen brightness all the way up, I got two and a half hours of battery life. And then battery saver mode, 1080p streaming at 50% brightness, we got four and a half hours. Frame rates are ridiculously low when unplugged, so don't expect a mind blowing gaming experience when using just the battery. It pretty much throttled me to only about 30 frames per second on every game. I tested out HP's claim that this laptop could recharge back to 50% from zero in only 45 minutes, and it proved to be accurate. It actually took me only 40 minutes to get to 50%, and a full recharge took about an hour and a half. And its thermal design power, or TDP, maxes out at 100 watts. So for performance and gaming benchmarks, for Geekbench, we got a multi-core score of 6181, a single core score of 1215, and a CUDA score of 108965. Our Signbench R23, for multi-core we got 6151, and for single core we got 1126. For 3D Mark, we got 8655 overall, 8993 for the graphics score, and 7136 for the CPU score. And here's our gaming benchmark results showing the FPS at the highest and lowest graphic preset settings. 
thermals. So when it came to thermals, I was pretty impressed. This is probably the coolest gaming laptop I've ever seen, literally. Here's the max CPU temperatures we got running each game at the highest preset settings. And here's the maximum external temperatures we got on the outside of the laptop. Thermals can be controlled by the Omen Gaming Hub application, which can be brought up instantaneously just by pressing this dedicated button here on the keyboard. The Omen Gaming Hub is much like the Alienware Command Center where you can monitor the system vitals like the GPU and CPU temperatures, the memory usage, and download and upload speeds. There's also a section for undervolting, which is really cool. I set my machine to intelligent undervolting and as a result got an 11% reduction in average CPU temperatures and a 13.4% increase on my max CPU speed because of it. There's also a custom undervolting option, but I don't really recommend you going into that unless you really know what you're doing. There's also a tab for customizing your lighting on the 4Zone keyboard, or per key if you have that model. And then they have an optional app called the Omen Light Studio that lets you do all kinds of extra cool color animations. Then you have your performance controls, which aren't really anything fancy, just a balanced and performance mode for gaming. You can also set your fan speeds manually here if you want to. Then lastly, there's a section called the Graphics Switcher. Hybrid mode uses the laptop's integrated graphics core and dramatically increases battery life, and Discrete utilizes a lot more of the GPU for high performance and smoother gameplay. So for the fans, the reason it does such a great job with thermals is partly due to its super powerful fans and high-end heat ramps. It's got massive intake fans on the bottom and exhaust fans across the entire backside of the laptop, as well as a vent on the right side of the computer. Although they do a great job keeping the computer cool, these fans aren't exactly quiet. When the computer's idle, the fans don't really shut off completely. In fact, they still run at about 2300 RPMs when the computer's doing absolutely nothing, but they're barely audible in this mode. When idle, the fans run at about 41 decibels, and at maximum speed, with the fans spinning at almost 6000 RPMs, we got a reading of almost 60 decibels. So for the sound, it has Bang & Olufsen speakers that are located above the keyboard, and its tiny subs are on the front, left, and right corners of the chassis. The speakers have a sharp, crisp sound that aren't horrible quality, but they definitely lack a good bass frequency like you'd find on something like a MacBook Pro. They were decently loud though despite their lack of bass and measured at 96.3 decibels at maximum volume. So my top three reasons to get this laptop Number one is the price. It definitely has a high bang for buck, dollar per power ratio. This model only cost me just a little over $1,800 with tax, and yet performed like a $3,000 machine. So number two is performance. The amount of frames per second I got was absolutely incredible, especially for such a small laptop. And number three is the thermals. As I mentioned earlier, this machine did a great job keeping the whole machine relatively cool despite how much power it was cranking out. So my top four reasons to maybe pass on this laptop, number one is the keyboard. It felt just a little too small when it came to typing. But then again, I am pretty used to a 17 inch laptop, so it might just take some getting used to. And number two is the touchpad. There's something lacking when it comes to the touchpad. I can't really put my finger on it, no pun intended. It just feels slightly cheap and sluggish. And the clicking mechanism isn't as satisfying as I'd like it to be. And number three is the sound. I really wasn't too impressed with the speakers and the sound quality. It was just a little too trebly, if that's even a word. But honestly, none of these are deal breakers for me. Overall, it's a really great, really powerful laptop that I consider to be pretty high value for its fairly low price tag. Guys, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment because every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interactive with my channel. And the winner this week is... Beastly Gaming. Congratulations. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.